What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs Series. I want to continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. March 24th, 1950. New York's Madison Square Garden showcases Rocky Marciano and Roland Estrada. Ten rounds. Both men were undefeated. Roland Estrada was 37-0. And this is what everyone was waiting for. They wanted to test Rocky Marciano. And Roland Estrada was the toughest opponent that Rocky Marciano would be facing. Everyone gave Roland Estrada a shot. But Roland Estrada's opportunity would fly by him when he went down in the fourth round. He had cuts over both eyes and a bloody nose. The referee, Jack Watson, scored it five to five even. Judges Artie Ardala had a four to five and Judge Arthur Schwartz had a five to four. They were all in favor of Rocky Marciano. The Marciano stood five for 10 and a half inches. He weighed 183 pounds. He had a 68 inch reach. He was 26 years of age at the time of that fight. He was 25 and over 23 knockouts. And he would earn $8,000 for this fight. Roland Estrada stood six foot, weighed 187 pounds. He was 22 years of age at the time of this fight. He was 37 and 0 with 17 knockouts, and he earned $13,000 for this fight. Now, who was Roland Estrada? He was born May 12, 1927, in the Bronx, New York. Died September 30th, 2009. He was 82 years of age at the time of his death. Fought from 1947 to 1961. Had a total bout career of 66 fights. 57 wins, 9 losses, 27 knockouts. And he was stopped twice. Between July 7th, 1947 and December 2nd, 1949. He had an impressive 37-0. That's impressive. Before he met Rocky Marciano. And he would go on to have another string of victories until he would roll into Don Buxeroni. He'd be in the ring with Keen Simmons, who was a very good fighter himself, good club fighter, Tiger Ted Laurie, Cesar Brion. Roland Estrada was in good company. Cesar Brion would be in the ring with Joe Lewis. Roland Estrada was an up-and-coming young man where everyone felt as though he may take out Rocky Marciano. He just didn't have the knockouts that would back up that claim. But he was very competitive. I rank him very highly. Shout out to Roland Estrada. Roland Estrada was such a popular figure. He would advertise for workout equipment, as you can see here. Because he had a chisel physique. Now, September 24th, 1953. I want to stay with these two fights. Rocky Marciano would score a 13 round technical knockout over Roland Estrada. New York's Polo Grounds. Referee was Ruby Goldstein. We stopped the contest. 13th round. Now, the IBC was sanctioning this bout. Al Wow, who was a former manager of Rocky Marciano, would part ways with him in their first fight, 1950. Because it was a conflict, he would be a matchmaker for that fight. And he couldn't be a manager and a matchmaker at the same time for the same fighter.
So the IBC was sanctioned this particular fight. September 24th, 1953. 44,562 spectators have paid $435, $1,817. $435,817 was paid for by very exciting spectators. 45 movie theaters in 34 cities. New Orleans had 3,000 spectators. Los Angeles, 7,000. I mean, this is incredible. Marciano was 29 years old in his fight. He weighed 185 pounds. He went on 17.5% of the game. Roland Estrada was 25 years old. He weighed 185 pounds. And he would earn 17% of the game. $65,000 would be his purse. Marciano was a 4-1 to favorite. He also weighed 185 and a quarter pounds. But he would be a favorite in this fight. He would earn 42.5%, $185,000 for this fight. Chicago had 12,881 spectators. That's how popular this fight was. Marciano would really put the pressure on Roland Estrada. But in my opinion, Marciano got dirty on Roland Estrada in this fight. He hit him on the opposite side of his hip when the referee wasn't watching. It would result to some low blows. He would eye gouge him. And Roland Estrada found it a little difficult to fight Marciano in this fashion. Because of Marciano's height, his ability to go to the body, to the arms, to the shoulders, to the neck, it was a crowd favorite. Much wasn't said about it. But it's a boxing match. Unfortunately, that's what happens. But I believe Roland Estrada might have been a little short change in his fight because of the tactics of Rocky Marciano.
Very good fighter was Roland Estrada. R.I.P. Salute to Roland Estrada. I can beat Roland Estrada, says Marciano. I can beat Marciano, says Roland Estrada. You almost did. Came close. Very good fighter, Roland Estrada. Salute. All right, I want to show you a book on Freddie Mills by Leslie Bell. And Freddie Mills would defeat Gus Lesnovich. And everyone was trying to get a fight with Gus Lesnovich. Leslie Charles would put up $75,000 to fight Gus Lesnovich. He didn't accept his offer. Jimmy Bivens and Archie Moore and even Charlie Burley all campaigned for Gus Lesnovich. He turned them all down. But he would give Freddie Mills a shot. Freddie Mills will lose his title to Joy Maxim. So I want to show you this book, but I have one hand. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause in between turning pages. In fact, let me just hold on one second. Change one page. I just want to show you some of the pictures here. There's some really good pictures in here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. One second. So to get this focus here for you. Pennsylvania Slayer Joe Baskey. He's a pretty good heavyweight. This Joe Baskey. The Freddie Mills will become champion when he defeated Gus Lesnavich. The very underrated light heavyweight was Freddie Mills. And he wrote... A series of training books. I have the entire collection that he wrote. Let me push pause for a second. So I can show you the whole book at one time. And I'll just zoom in a little bit at a time. All right. At the London Casino on February 7th, Freddie Mills had his only contest of 1945. He was matched with Scott Kenshaw. Here you have Freddie Mills and Gus Lesnovich. He was to have met Bruce Woodcock, June 4th. So what this book does, is it goes through his entire career fight by fight. And it just gives you some details as to what went on during the fight, during the training of his fights. Because like I said, he wrote a lot of training books. And this is the book I used to study Freddie Mills' career.
Very detailed, very detailed. And I'm just going from page to page here. All right, so I'm just going to show you one more page, actually. I'm going to move on. Now, this was a little memento that was given to Fetty Mills. And it was some luck because he was going to face Lloyd Marshall, Black Murder's Row. And many didn't really give him a chance on this fight. They really didn't. Lloyd Marshall was a hell of a fighter. You have Lloyd Marshall to your right, Freddie Mills to the left of you. This is Lloyd Marshall. He stopped Freddie Mills. And this psychologically did a lot to Freddie Mills. And he went open up a nightclub, a couple of businesses, but his manager was part of the mob, gangsters. And it was said that he was to have murdered eight prostitutes. And they said he committed suicide and everything else. But Freddie Mills was some fighter. Uh, shout out to Freddie Mills. It's Lloyd Marshall. Hell of a fighter he was. All right, let's move on. Once again, shout out to Roland Estrada. All right, that is it for me for this video. Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. 100 years of world championship fights will continue in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.